Let's talk about excellent campaign video, blows you away, gets you to donate, the campaign goes nowhere. 31 days expire, whatever the length, you look at it and it's this depressing amount and you're like, how is this possible? That will all be in the outreach. So if you have a really fantastic crowdfunding video and, uh, and it's you know, pulling at people's heartstrings, the only reason there's, they're not contributing, well, I'll say this. Number one is maybe that's a fantastic pitch video by someone's standards, but not by the standards of the audience that are actually there for the movie. So uh, there's that piece. But if it really is like an exceptional crowdfunding video, I've never seen an exceptional crowdfunding video. No, one time I did. Actually, one time on Seed and Spark, probably still the best crowdfunding video I've ever seen in my life. And the campaign went nowhere, and that's because they did zero outreach and nobody saw it. Right? So you can't just make an excellent crowdfunding video and put it on a website and hope that somebody sees it. It is your responsibility on any platform to drive traffic. And you start with your friends and family. That's your first 20 or 30% in. Why? Because strangers like to pick a winner. They need to see momentum and they need to see inevitability of success. Right? So you can demonstrate the inevitability of success by making a kick-ass crowdfunding video. The momentum you have to generate from your community first, which is why it's a really good idea to build a crowd. So you're not just going to your friends and family, but your, your immediate community is already people who are like, yeah, I want to see this thing, right? So that by the time you launch your campaign, you're not just limited to your mom, dad, uncle, and like a couple of your brother's banker friends. So that immediate crowd, again, was those people that got involved with the process of it yeah. when you launched, let's say, your Twitter or your Instagram, whatever called yep. to you most, and saw your whatever tweets about a similar situation that you're going to do a story about, or yeah, those are the people. Okay. Absolutely. And then outreach is what? Outreach has many components. Um, outreach has, there's direct outreach, um, and that is everybody that you can reach by email. Oh. I have to start by saying this. So um, social media is not a means unto, is not a, a means unto itself or an end unto itself. Um, social media is a tool for getting people to do stuff. Generally speaking, the highest conversion rate to watching a movie, contributing to a campaign will come from direct emails. So actually, um, think about it as concentric circles. The outermost concentric circle is all the people you don't know. That's most of the people. Inside that is everyone you can reach through social media. And you can grow that capacity, right? Um, <clears throat> but it's not entirely reliable. A lot of times it's feed-based or it's algorithm-based. So when you tweet something, it's not guaranteed that 100% of your followers will see it. When you post something on Facebook, God knows how they display it to people. Like it's a, that is a secret hidden behind lock and key, um, even when you pay for it. So um, social media is good, but thanks to the power of the smartphone, you can reach everybody by email, and if they're really excited to get your emails, they will open them and read them, right? So I never look at social media as like, once I get to 200,000 Facebook followers, I'm done, because I've seen campaigns with 200,000 Facebook followers fail, right? Getting people to like you on Facebook only proves that you can get people to like you on Facebook, right? Um, if you can get them to like you on Facebook, can you then get them to, to sign up for a mailing list because you're giving them some sort of reason or incentive to do so? And then once you reach them in their inbox, will they click on the stuff that you send them? This is all easily trackable through all of the tools that are available to us now. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, trust me, because if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, <clears throat> so what's really important is to be able to increase your direct outreach capacity. So um, part of the pre-campaign buildup is to try to really grow your email lists primarily. And whether that's because you're doing a ton of outreach through social media and then you're getting people to sign up for your email list, um, or it's because you're partnering with people who themselves have email lists, organizations, things like that. Um, so the first part of your outreach is direct. How many people can you reach in their inbox and what is the work it will take to reach all of the people you can conceivably reach in their inboxes. And I would include in direct outreach actually Facebook direct messaging, Twitter direct messaging. You have to be careful with that because if you just copy and paste to everyone, number one, Facebook will shut you down. And number two, you're likely to kind of insensitively send somebody something that 
may not be appropriate. Like, if you're not paying attention, you might send your crowdfunding campaign to your friend who's like, I just lost my mom, or your friend who's like, I have no money, or whatever. Um, or that happens to me all the time, I'll get sent a crowdfunding campaign for a film that's crowdfunding on another platform, and I'll be like, bro, do you even read things? Um, not that I don't contribute on other platforms, I'm just like, did you, but did you consider that who I, anyway. Um, so, uh, so it's important to be very sensitive to who you're reaching and gathering all the materials it takes to reach out to them. So you wanna like bring all of the message tested language together. The images that seem to have really worked with your audience, the music that seems to have really worked with your audience, the videos that have seemed to really work with your audience and get the text as concise as possible because when people open emails, they need to get to the decision making point quickly, right? The emails that you wait to write until two in the morning always end up being the like long ones of why I got into film in the first place. And to be honest, basically nobody but your mom cares, right? So get to the most concise bullet points of like, why me, why this, why now, why you? Communicate that. Make sure that every time you send an email, it also includes immediately shareable Twitter and Facebook language that you have pre-composed. So you can turn me from my inbox to a social media evangelist with two clicks, let's face it. Most people are reading those kinds of emails while they're sitting on the toilet. They got one hand free. They, they're, if, you, if you can help them share stuff with two clicks of a thumb, you're gonna get them to share stuff, right? So your direct outreach is really about getting people in their inboxes and also turning them into amplifiers, right? That's one phase of outreach. And usually there's like three categories of direct outreach for personal outreach. The first is uh, the people you're basically sure are going to contribute to your campaign. Those like immediate friends and family um, who will support anything that you do. You're going to reach out to them well in advance of launching your campaign. You're going to tell them about what you're up to. You're going to get them to commit to contributing. You're going to find out how much they might be willing to contribute. So you have an idea of where you stand on day one. That's really important. Um, and if one of them says like, I'm in for $2,000, you're like, great can we run a matching campaign in the second week of our campaign to see if we can turn that 2,000 into 4,000 and incentivize people to get involved in the second week of the campaign so you can keep up your momentum? So you're gonna get a sense through your direct outreach of what you're gonna do on day one and you know maybe there's some options and opportunities in the second and third week of your campaign for bringing those larger contributors in a little later. Um, <clears throat> There's the second set of people who you're like, maybe with a personal email, they will get involved. And you need to really look at how long is that list? And you gotta pool the resources of all of your filmmaking team. How long is this list? Um, because if it's two or 300 emails, you're not gonna send them all in one day. If you need to send two or 300 more or less personalized emails, that's part of the work that you're parsing out for yourself in the campaign. You're organizing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit to sending 10 per day, right? Um, giving yourself something that you can stick to as opposed to something you're going to procrastinate on until the last week of your campaign Then you're gonna send a bunch of desperate emails that aren't very effective. They're gonna be those long diatribes horrible um, And then the third category is kind of like everyone you've ever emailed ever that's accruing in your Gmail inbox and you can create a, 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 Like a MailChimp list and just check in with people and make sure they want to be subscribed to it And then you can kind of blast them a couple times throughout the campaign come what may Right? That's a good way to start your mailing list there. Um, and then any organizational outreach. So anybody who's willing to put you in their newsletter or send you out to stuff, you have to give them the materials they need to succeed as well. The organizational part in the outreach is the most important part. You need to be prepared in advance with um, not only how you're doing all your direct outreach, but how you're keeping your social media feed fresh. Your Twitter feed while you're crowdfunding can't now devolve into only self-promotional tweets. You need to keep up about a nine to one ratio. And that means you still need to be in the conversation, the ideas around your film, maybe around filmmaking or around the topic of the film that you're making. Um, you know, for Dear White People, for example, it's really easy. You can get into a lot of like interesting comedic uh, takes on race or social justice. Um, they have a sort of a clear conversation they can get involved in. Um, figuring out what that is and making sure you're still maintaining that takes a plan, right? You have to have either somebody who's doing it 
uh, or somebody who's researching it, or you do a bunch of research in advance and you say, okay, I think these are the topics we're gonna really focus on each week. These are the audiences we're really gonna try to reach each week. We're gonna focus a lot on Twitter because we know we can reach our like young women interested in social justice there, but actually, like, if we really want to get to like the filmmaker crowd, they're actually largely on Instagram. So we're going to do this thing on Instagram for that audience. And then um, there's the sort of uh, like baby boom generation who's very interested in you know seeing versions of themselves as children that they never got movies that never got made when they were children, and sort of like the sort of nostalgic thing. And they're more reachable on Facebook. Right? And so this is gonna be our campaign on Facebook. You've gotta have a plan for your social media to keep it fresh, keep it interesting. If you're tweeting the same shit in week four that you were in week one, we are bored and probably have unfollowed you. Right? So you have to have a plan for that as well. Um, and your updates, the, every crowdfunding uh, platform has a, an update uh, function. It's kind of like a blog, but let me be clear. People don't uh, subscribe, don't contribute let me be clear, people don't contribute to crowdfunding campaigns to just like subscribe to blogs. The point of your updates is to show progress, to demonstrate further inevitability of success, to keep up the momentum, um, to bring people deeper into your, uh, your world, and the content should be visual and shareable in exciting ways. You have to make your updates easily shareable, whether you're using click to tweet or you're pre-composing shareable language. Um, all the time, everything that you're doing should increase the virality of your campaign, the shareability. Uh, virality is dumb because like you can't, you can't predict virality. All you can do is try to increase your chances to achieve it.